Graphing distance versus time in physics is all about showcasing how an object's position changes over time. It's a critical concept for understanding motion, and honestly, it can be pretty fun to draw these graphs once you get the hang of it. First things first, you'll need some graph paper or a digital tool if you prefer the tech route. Let's get set up. Label your axes. Start with the basics. Your vertical axis, usually the y-axis, is going to represent distance. Label it accordingly, and make sure to indicate the unit meters, kilometers, miles, whatever makes sense for the scenario you're graphing. Distance is your dependent variable because it depends on the factor of time. Your horizontal axis, the x-axis, is going to be time. Label this axis too, and again, don't forget the unit seconds, minutes, hours, etc. Time is your independent variable. Scaling your graph. We don't just throw numbers any which way. You'll want to set a sensible scale for each axis. If your object travels a long distance over a short time, adjust your scale to fit the entire journey onto your graph. Maybe every centimeter represents one minute, and every square represents 10 meters. Keep it consistent. Plotting the points. Say you've taken some measurements of how far a car has traveled over a certain time period. These are your data points. Plot these points on your graph where the vertical position indicates the distance traveled and the horizontal position corresponds to the time. Drawing the line. Once your points are plotted, draw a line through them. It's important to note that this line needs to make sense physically. If it's a straight line, the slope shows you the speed. If it's curved, it's telling you that there's acceleration or deceleration happening. And remember, not all lines are created equal. A horizontal line indicates no change in position, like if I parked my car in Portland and decided to walk to a coffee shop instead. A diagonal line moving upwards shows motion at a constant speed, and a curve represents changing speed. What it all means. Your graph tells a story. A steeper slope means faster speed. If the line levels off, the object is stopping. A line that returns to zero shows the object came back to its starting point. For a real-world example from my life in Portland, Let's say I'm biking to Powell's books from my home. The distance versus time graph would start at zero, slope upwards as I bike there, become flat as I browse the shelves, time is increasing but I'm not covering any distance, and then slope back down as I return home. And that's pretty much it. It's a visual representation of an object's journey. It's a powerful tool in physics for analyzing motion, and it doesn't take much more than paper, pencil, and a ruler, or perhaps some software if you like to click rather than scribble.